welcome to tour the automobile exhibition at the third China International Import Expo. I'm Xinhua News Agency correspondent Mu Xuyao reporting from Shanghai. The auto exhibition at every year CIIE is definitely a highlight and a mo one of the most anticipated exhibitions. And this year is no exception. And when I come here, the first thing that catches my eyes is this one, this car. It's a futuristic looking. So, and today, let's not only get a closer look and also invite someone who knows it the knows the details to tell us more. Joining me now is Mr. Richard Song, CEO of Apollo Future Mobility Group. Hello, Mr. Song. Well, Thank hi. you for joining Welcome. us today. Welcome. So could you please tell us more about this car? Because this is not, definitely not something that we could see on the street every day. Sure. Yeah, this is our flagship uh, hypercar, uh, Apollo IE. The meaning of IE is Italian, means uh, intention, emotion, so in very intense emotion. So this is the whole world only have 10 of them. Okay. Only the, yeah, only ten of them. This is the number two car. Uh, we call it the Golden Dragons. Um, uh, this is already a customer's car, so we actually sold it already, and then we lent it back for this specifically for CIIE. Okay. And this is the uh, world first uh, mass produ produce um, over ninety percent uh, carbon fiber structures from outside to inside, and um, it's only weight one point two tons. Yeah. Uh, with a V12 engine, um, 780 horsepower, but from zero to 100, it takes only 2.7 seconds. Yeah, the key thing of this is the safety. Uh, we have our own design uh, monocoque, which is like an eggshell within. So even the car, if it flips over times, you know, it will not. You have no injuries for sure. Yeah. So the, and and also. Um, uh, with the aerodynamic design, it has over seven tons of downforce. So this is actually, you can run it uh, upside down in the tunnel. Wow. Yeah. So may I ask how much does it cost? It's cost uh, three million US. Yeah. Oh my God, very exclusive. Yeah, very exclusive. But you know, the important thing is uh, this Golden Dragons. The key thing is uh, uh, the color uh, is specifically requested uh, from the customers. Uh, he has to pay additional around two million RMB just for the color. Wow. Yes. The rich people's world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I, I know, like, uh, I have saw a lot of interesting new cars around this booth. So could you please show us around and sure, maybe... Yeah, we have other products as well. Uh, share uh, share with us the new yeah. technologies and new materials of this, this booth, the cars, and also as one of their features. Yeah, uh, for the Apollo group, we actually have two parts of the business. One is a hypercar that you see outside. The other side, we call it Apollo Advanced Technologies, which we do a lot of uh, upfront R&D uh, for a lot of big brands. Like for example, in Europe, the Volkswagen Group, Audi, they're all our customers. Uh, in Japan, you know, uh, Honda, those guys are our, our customers already. Mm -hmm. We do uh, not only design, but actually realizing uh, our customers' uh, idea. Like if they have an idea, they come to us, we provide design, provide engineering, provide simulations, provide testing, and then we also built what we call the concept, the prototype, and then the pre-production prototype. So basically, we deliver you uh, what is ready to be made. Okay, so this is very important. Our, our team is in Germany, England, and also in Japan. So this is one of our new design. Uh, because in Europe and Japan, US, there are a lot of um, elderly. Um, it's difficult for them to travel. And then uh, uh, for the like overweight person, um, this would be perfect for them to basically travel from home, elevator to supermarket, to park, you know, and then without needing a license. So this is actually very useful. I believe in China will be very useful too. Yeah, and, and we are looking for partners uh, to basically work with us and then produce this in China and uh, distribute it in China. How much does it weigh? Oh, this is really light. Um, I don't remember the weight, but it's it's only about uh, 85 kg. Yeah, so very lightweight, and but you can travel basically around 80 km uh, uh, on on range wise, uh, about 30 to 40 uh, kilometers per hour speed. So it's not really fast, but it's good for elderly and and also um, uh, uh, for person that is cannot walk well. Yeah, so this is very good. Yeah, it's slow and it's for safety concerns. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then uh, also introduce, uh, this is our first generation's uh, uh, electric car, uh, five years ago, design, yeah. But 
what we are showing here is we basically provide a very simple but drive-by-wire system uh, for big brand putting their own hardware and software so that they can test uh, autonomous driving. Yeah, so we don't do the autonomous driving part ourselves, but we provide this platform. It's easier for them to put on their hardware and software and immediately test on the autonomous driving. You can see a lot of details from this model. Yeah, yeah, uh, because we have a long history of producing uh, uh, EV already, so we have very good experience on developing and producing EV ourselves. And actually, the, the crown jewels I want to introduce is our 800 volt silicon carbine inverter. Wow. This is actually the norm of the future for EV. Uh, what it is, is that right now, most of the um, EV, even the popular brand, they use 400 volt RGBT inverter. They will have a uh, thermal management problem, which means they overheat. Mm. Yeah. But for us, it's because we're using uh, silicon carbine. So there will be no more overheating problems. And, and this significantly reduced the weight and size. So one of these is equal to two of this plus this. So one of that equal to two of this and one of this. And then without a cooling system. So significantly reduce the size uh, that is needed for EV. So increase the range, increase the efficiency, and that's a breakthrough uh, for all the EV in the futures. And also yeah. boost the safety. Exactly, exactly, because there's no more potential heating and then the exp potential explosion as well. Yeah. Oh, there's a cute car. Yes. What is for? This is actually our latest uh, um, uh, uh, R&D development. It's uh, a urban delivery vehicle. Yeah, we have a new name called You and Me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's very easy to assembly. Uh, so basically, we can produce all the parts in Europe and then deliver to China and then China can assemble very quickly. We're only looking to sell this around six, 7,000 US per. So it's very easy and it is very good for um, the logistic company, the, 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 the courier, like uh, uh, SF, uh, Jingdong, all those, and post office. Yeah, and even uh, yesterday, uh, the mayor of Shanghai said that it's good for uh, some logistic use within the city. Yeah, so this is good for 150 kilometers um, and the battery is very convenient. It's, it's like a, a, a small luggage. You can just take it out and bring it home, charge it and, and put it back in. Next morning, you can start working again. Everything's very convenient. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is we believe we have a big market in China and Europe and, and, and US as well. So is this the first time that your company comes to the CIE? Yes, yes. Uh, this is the first time coming to CIE. The reason for that is uh, uh, one of our major shareholders uh, from Shanghai mm. Yeah, and also, and uh, we want to bring the brand Apollo to introduce to China um, to be um, uh, anticipating next year new models. Yeah, like for example, outside you can see that the hypercar IE, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, but uh, I can assure that the, the next one, we're coming out the next generations uh, in, in March, April next year, will also be very exciting. So we are hoping uh, there will be some uh, mainland Chinese uh, buyer for our next uh, next models, yeah, and also we are hoping to look for some um, uh, Chinese major auto OEM to be able to work with us in our you know technology departments. Yeah, so that's what we are hoping for. And Apollo is relatively new to the Chinese market. So in the future, in what areas you may want to continue to tap into the Chinese auto market? Oh yeah, we're definitely trying to join more uh, auto show in China, and also meeting with more uh, government officials. Uh, hoping that they will be able to introduce us uh, good potential partners and clients. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today, Mr. Song. Thank you. Thank thank you, very you. Much. Appreciate it. Well, uh, through Mr. Song's introduction, we've learned a lot of new technologies of the cars here at the Apollo's booth. And uh, well, the most impressive, most impressive car for me, of course, is all that that all carbon fiber sports car. Something that I cannot afford for sure. But with the uh, upgrading and uh, uh, development of new technology, uh, new materials, uh, and maybe uh, engineers and efforts uh, in the future, I think our driving, the way of our driving, will will be substantially changed. So in the future, who knows, maybe I can buy something new and fancy. <laughs>
And let's continue our tour here. Here's the Volkswagen's and Audi's booth. China's leading automaker, First Automotive Works, and German automaker Audi signed a memorandum of understanding in October on the establishment of a joint venture for producing electric vehicles based on the premium platform, electric platform, or the PPE. Here's a very fancy sports car. The automobile section attracted the world's major automakers at the previous two sessions uh, of CIIE, and this year the world's top seven largest automobile groups have been participating in the event. A total of 30 new products and technologies are on display in this 30,000 square meter automobile section. And the exhibits covered a wide range of products, including branded cars, motorcycles, auto parts, and automobile developing and testing systems. And under the spotlight are for sure the latest technology and vehicles, which could represent the future development of the auto industry, particularly new energy vehicle, hydrogen fuel cell technology, autonomous driving technology, auto, automotive power system, among others. Right here at Michelin's booth, a press conference is going on. And the CIA has grown into a platform for global enterprises to expand business in China as they could meet partners and customers face to face like this. And this year, because of the COVID-19 situation, they could do it both online and offline and carry out cloud signing. The exhibition area of the third CIA has been expanded to 360,000 square meters. It's divided into six sections, displaying food and agricultural products, automobiles, technical equipment, consumer goods, medical devices, and healthcare products, as well as trading services. And right here, we can see the exhibition booth of Japanese automaker Toyota. Toyota also displays a lot of new cars, ranging from new energy and a smart driving. Auto sales in September rose 12.8% year on year to 2.57 million units. And the rise uh, marked the fifth consecutive month of double digit growth. And auto sales in the country rose 17.4% on a monthly basis. Of course, the people here are checking out the, the cars on display at Toyota's exhibition booth. This car is called LQ. Earlier I talked to some staff working here and they, they told me uh, this, is, uh, this car is equipped with a smart system. When you're sitting behind the wheel, the car could feel your motion because this car is not only something that for your mobility, it also wants to become your friends according to Toyota. So when you sit behind, it can feel your, if you are happy or sad and they could, then they could play some music for you according to the emotions they detected. And we can 
also see that Toyota is partnered with the Beijing Winter Olympics in 2022. So this car will be applied in the Olympic Village. In the center, we could see a um, very minivan called e pallet This vehicle is expected to be used during the 2022 Beijing Winter Games as well, providing automated uh, looks like transportation in the Olympic Village for athletes and related staff. It is equipped with large sliding doors, low floors, electric ramps, and a rival control system. It also has a, spe a specially designed automated driving system, advanced sensors, high accuracy 3D mapping and operation management system to ensure safety. And to support a safe operation, the ePallet also features an external human machine interface designed to assist communication with those around the vehicle, including pedestrians during automated driving. As first announced in 2018, ePallet is to uh, Toyota's first vehicle developed specifically for auto autonomous mobility. And earlier I've talked to Toyota staff and they told me in the future they hope the ePallet could be introduced in large scale residential uh, compounds where it could help transport residents and make their life more convenient. Like uh, after going grocery stores, uh, you could when you arrive your uh, residential compound, you could board on this minivan and you don't need to go back home walking long way and taking heavy goods. China's auto market was hit hard by COVID-19. Actually, in the first three quarters, auto sales totaled 17.12 million units, down 6.9% year on year. And the auto market began to recover in April, thanks to unleashed pent-up demand and supportive policies. And to meet new demands generated by green consumption, China State Council approved a plan to boost the country's new energy vehicle industry, which underlied efforts to tackle vital technologies, consolidate the construction of infrastructure, and strengthen international cooperation. The data also showed China produced 2.52 million cars in September, up 14.1% year on year. Let's continue to look around. Right here is the exhibition booth of U.S. automaker Ford. Uh, right here we can see a lot of models of Mustang, but what else this exhibition booth has offered for us? Let's take a look. And joining me now is Mr. Mark Rarick, Vice President of China Strategy at Ford. Hello, Mr. Uh, Rarick. Thank you for joining us today. So we've saw a lot of new cars right here. So could you please show us around and uh, tell us what's our highlights here at the Ford exhibition? Oh, I'd love to. Thanks so much for um, coming to our stand today. And I'd like to take you through um, our focus on Ford's imports into China that we um, display here at the stand today. So if we could, let's uh, move over. I'd like to start talking with you about our F-150 Raptor. So if we could move right over here. So this is our Ford F-150 Raptor pickup truck. Uh, the, um, the F-150 pickup has actually been the best-selling pickup truck in America for 43 years. And the Raptor is kind of our coolest <laughs> F-150. Um, designed to be uh, an off-road uh, type of vehicle with um, you know great exterior unique features that um, that, that really bring um, the vehicle to life and I'll show you some of the interesting technology features that we have on the f-150 so um, 
this step bar right here, for instance, I won't demonstrate it here, <laughs> but it's actually um, has the technology to move up and down. Oh, okay. So um, maybe you're not as tall as me and mm -hmm. climbing into this is hard. You can actually lower the step bar down to here to be able to fit your unique pattern. Yeah, actually, that's a problem for me <laughs> to step onto a yeah. little bit. So it lowers hard. down to make it easier. Um, you may also decide that um, for a certain day that, that you really don't want this to be seen, mm -hmm. it can actually retract oh, inside okay. of the pickup truck. So it's just an example of some of the um, technology, the American technology that we're bringing in in this iconic uh, best-selling product mm -hmm. into China. Um, so what I'd like to take you to next then mm -hmm. is um, one of our most exciting entrants into the China market mm -hmm. that, uh, that's going to be coming uh, next year. Next year. Yep. And, um, and so that's our Mach-E Mustang. Um, the, the Mustang Mach-E is um, the very first electrified BEV okay. uh, version of the Mustang that we've, uh, that we've ever had with Ford. Um, the Mustang has a 56-year heritage as, uh, as a muscle car. Uh, and so we've put a big emphasis on the Mach-E on acceleration. Uh, to have a really fast zero to 96 kilometer per hour speed of just over three seconds, if you can imagine going that fast. Uh, and so the battery electric technology allows us to bring that in to the, uh, to the market. Uh, the vehicle also have a 600 kilometer range as well. So um, really making sure we bring in a lot of our technology into the market. Um, I'd like to show you next um, a real success story of why imports are so important to Ford. Um, so this is the Ford Explorer, which is our flagship sport utility vehicle. Um, so this is one of the most popular selling SUVs ever in the North American market with the US. Um, we started this out as an import into China as, a, as our premium um, Ford branded sport utility vehicle. Um, it was so successful here. We've out now actually decided to localize it in China, and um, we build this at our Chang'an Ford joint venture. Uh, and so, um, you know, that allows us to um, understand the market better, understand what's important uh, to the Chinese consumer, uh, and then when we're really successful, like the Explorer, we're able to make the big investment here and um, be able to localize it, and uh, and hopefully. Uh, uh, really grow our, our sales in China um, from this localized Explorer. So we're really proud of the work that we've done this year to, um, to localize the Explorer. Um, and then the next thing I'd like to show you is um, our uh, technology for the future. So um, Ford is committed to uh, helping to develop smart vehicles for a smart world. And so um, we've actually been um, working in our home uh, our home state of Michigan in the US to um, to develop um, our uh, autonomous vehicle capabilities in the future so uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is um, both here and here is actually a city map of where our headquarters is at in Detroit uh, in, in Dearborn Michigan which is a suburb of Detroit um, and so on the simulation we'll show you what the, um, the traffic looks like um, during rush hour. So if you come over and take a look here, we've got an interactive map that shows, um, you know, red for vehicles that are slow moving, green for vehicles that are fast moving. And you can see on the expressway that there's a lot of red, right? So um, as our way of trying to bring smart vehicles to a smart world to help for a better society, um, we started to think about, well, what can we do leveraging um, autonomous vehicle technology? So one of the ideas we've come up with is, uh, is the, called the corridor. So if we could display the corridor here uh, to show you on the screen. So if you look in the upper right, uh, shows the dedicated corridor that uh, we're working to build between uh, Detroit and Ann Arbor, Michigan, um, to be able to bring level two all the way through to level four autonomous vehicles. Um, and so we're partnering with the local government there to um, put in the infrastructure uh, that allows the infrastructure and the, the, the roadway to better communicate with the vehicle. Um, so that's the first step. And over the next three years, we'll build and have that capability put in place um, in the, the Metro Detroit area. Um, the next thing that we're doing is working on smart shuttles to, um, to help move people in a more efficient way 
uh, around the city. And then the third thing that we're working to do, we call V2X, which is vehicle to infrastructure, which is um, things like traffic lights in the city, being able to have the vehicles communicate to the traffic lights, adjust their timing to help move the traffic along. So through our simulation, we believe those three things put together will actually um, improve people's driving time during rush hour by 46%. Um, by being able to couple the smart infrastructure, the smart car, and talking together. So those are real examples of um, where we're progressing um, in the U.S., our home market, that we're looking to bring in uh, over time as we partner with, uh, you know, with, with different uh, city governments and state governments, and provincial governments in, in China. So, um, so apart from products like the floors, can also bring traffic solutions in the future to solve problems in China. Exactly, and the 5G network that's being built here opens all kinds of possibilities for us to be able to do that. Yeah, so in your opinion, what does the CIE, the platform provided by the CIE, could benefit your company? Yeah, so the CIE has been a great event for us. We've been here all three years mm -hmm. uh, of the CIE, and it's a great opportunity for us to, uh, to talk to and meet with various levels of city governments, uh, provincial governments, national government, uh, as well as to meet with our partners. Uh, you know, we have great joint venture partners in China uh, with, uh, with Chang'an, who's a part of our mm -hmm. Chang'an um, joint venture, as well as uh, JMC, uh, which is our commercial vehicle joint venture. So um, we're able to, um, to really look and unlock opportunities for all the great technology that you're seeing here with all of our um, business and government partners uh, all during the CIA show. And since the COVID-19 pandemic, the Chinese government has been stepping up efforts to provide more, create more opportunities for companies, including foreign companies doing business in China to recover uh, as part of its plan to stimulate the economy. So, how do you think of those efforts and has your company benefited from any of the policies? Sure. Well, we've, um, we're have we really impressed with how the Chinese government has handled COVID. Um, you know, it's hard to imagine back at the beginning of the year, but um, this event that we're having at CIAE, I understand it's the biggest convention being held anywhere in the world this year, right? So what better representation of um, the, the um, positive impact of the, of the Chinese government policies um, that have taken place and it's allowed our business to um, you know to really uh, to grow and improve during what's turning out to be globally a really really challenging year so um, you know we're really happy to be here and we're happy to take advantage of um, you know the, the great opportunities that have been provided to us in China so what is your plan your company's plan in the future in the Chinese market oh well so we've got um, a lot of plans for the future. Um, one of our biggest bets that we're making is um, really building our design and product development capability in China. So um, last month, we just opened uh, an all new design studio in Shanghai that'll allow us to take everything from the initial ideas of what a future vehicle might be, uh, go through all the computer and the clay modeling process that we use to actually design the exterior, interior appearance of the vehicle. And then we already have the capability to do all the engineering work. So um, it's gonna be, uh, we call it our DX hub. It's gonna be our digital experience hub um, coupled with our design center capability. Uh, and it shows you um, how big our bet is for the Chinese market here. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Rarig, for yes. introducing so much interesting information for us today. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much thank you. for coming to our stand. Thank today. you. Uh, during this short tour uh, around the automobile exhibition here at the CIE, we've seen a lot of new cars, new technologies, uh, new energy vehicles. Definitely a highlight. It's gaining momentum at present, but at the same time, new materials, uh, the 5G technology, artificial intelligence as well as the Internet of Things are all uh, shaping the future of vehicle as well as the evolution of the entire auto industry. I just can't wait to see what will happen in the future. How about you? That's all for our today's show. I'm Xinhua News Agency correspondent Mu Xu Yao. Thank you for watching. See you next time.